I think personally as a British man, I should have the right to decide who I want in my country. I should have been consulted about immigration. This is the sort of thing that gets you cancelled, isn't it? You know what I mean? But we've got to be able to speak freely. It's a core tenet of liberal Britain that we can speak freely. That's not to say it doesn't come with some aspect of consequence, but I should be able to say that I haven't got any children, but if I did have children, I'd want to be able to drop them off at a Taylor Swift dance party without the threat of them being killed. That's got to have some value. I have to be able to say that, surely. I don't... The, the problem that I've got with our Prime Minister... I've got a lot of problems with it. I said this before, didn't I? I said, you watch out when Labour get in. I didn't realise it was going to happen so quickly. Keir Stalin, as he's being called, or our glorious leader, as I prefer to call him, uh, head of the Labour Party, rules with a very iron fist, very draconian fist, which is why you don't hear any Labour politicians kind of speak out about them because you just get rid of them. My argument, the whole thing really with this is... He's awarding like £30 million to protect mosques. He's not awarding any money to go and protect, well, sports clubs or anything else. Because I think you'd have to admit then that people that have come into the UK have a different agenda to us. Guys, speak freely about it in the comments. I'm the guy that's going to get cancelled. My YouTube channel will be obviously stop not you you can comment in the in the in the thing but just be a little bit careful because your comments gets removed automatically if you go too over the top it's not me removing it all right i only remove comments that uh, are so awful to read that if young people read them I, I couldn't have them in the channel i couldn't so if you you know i can't do it or profanities removed automatically so just don't use profanity and swear words and just comment in the channel just be mature about it we're mature british people aren't we surely and that's why i've always said I had a bit of a row with my wife a couple of days ago. And I said, look, all we want is a conversation. And she agreed. Yeah, fair enough. We should have a conversation about immigration. The truth is, it's a bit late now. That conversation should have happened a long time ago. Remember Christopher Hitchens saying, I'm going to lean on Islam a little bit here. Because I think it's important that we do that. Because I think there is a threat within the community, within the Islamic community, that's not being addressed by the Islamic community itself. We'll talk about that in a second. But Christopher Hitchens back in 2009 said, Criticise Islam whilst you can, because very soon they'll make it impossible to do so. And of course, that's what Keir Starmer is starting to talk about with Islamophobia, isn't it? Very soon, we won't be able to criticise Islam. And you must, absolutely must be able to criticise anything, religions, politics, anything at all. That's what freedom of speech is about. We should be able to criticise it. My issue with Islam at the moment is we have moderate Islam, moder moderate Muslims who I work with and, and they're in my school and I used to fly with them. And my, my wrist was repaired, by the way, by, as I, as I keep saying, an Iranian guy. So repaired by a Muslim. I mean, these people are not issued British as fine. It's the Islamist sect within them. It's the violent ones within them. It's the, what are called the fundamentals. I was listening to a politician. I think it was the Egyptian politician. You might be able to find it on YouTube. He was talking the other day, in fact, and he was saying, look, I'll try and find the clip for you. He was saying, all the people we don't want in our countries, they're coming to you. <laughs> don't let them in. These are people that are so radical in Islam. They're such radical Muslims that they do not fit in with our countries. These are obviously the countries they've gone from, the Islamic countries they've gone from. But they're coming to your country. Don't let them in. And we did let them in, of course. Whether we wanted to through normal migration or whether we let them in through the boats, of course, and turned a blind eye. I'm assuming this is something to do with pushing the GDP up of the country at the expense, of course, of a few knife attacks. I mean, crikey. Now, of course, what people say, they don't want us to talk about this. So they will say, don't, Tim, you're criticising all Muslims with this. I'm, I'm not at all. Absolutely not. But I, I'm not. I'm, I'm, I couldn't care less what you, what you think or what you say. Of course I couldn't. But I am heavily, overwhelmingly critical of the fundamentals within any community, whether it's fundamentals Catholics, of which my mum is, but she doesn't go around stabbing people, but she is a fundamental Catholic. I'll be overly critical of my mum if she was stabbing people. But I'm overly critical of fundamental Muslims or Islamists that go around trying to enforce their views on the rest of the community, a community in which arguably they are guests. Because I think it is right. I think we can say, look, we never asked for people to be here, whether they might be Muslims, Sikhs, Hindus. It could be anything, right? It could be anything at all. The indigenous British, whoever they were, people say we're a nation of immigrants. We're not. We were invaded. We know this. If you know history, of course, we're not a nation of immigrants. Before 1940, there was less than 1% of immigrants in the UK. Look it up. It's not my facts. I deal in facts here, guys. I don't make facts up. I just deal in them, all right? So, you know, go look it up if you want to. It's online. What was the immigration levels in the United Kingdom prior to 1940? 
And since 1940, of course, I did read a statistic saying that we've had more immigration in the last six months in the United Kingdom than we have had in a thousand years prior to 1940. I'm just saying, surely the British people get a vote. Obviously, we don't. But shouldn't we get a vote? I deal with some very left wing people, whether in my school, there's not many, to be fair, whether it's in my family. My family's very left leaning. Healthcare, education. We all know that, guys. I come from the military, so I'm slightly different. I'm not crit- criticising anyone here. But I had a guy this morning who I who I know, and he said, well, hang on a second. He said, I work with an NHS, and in my entire team, there's only two Indigenous, he called them ethnic British, in the team. Everyone else is, is immigrants from all over the world. I said, well, that's all well and good, mate. I said, don't get me wrong. We'll celebrate that, absolutely. And if you want to bring doctors, surgeons, all that kind of stuff in, nursing staff from other overseas, I'm more than happy with that. You know, these these very educated immigrants, Brian, bring them in, make them British, get them citizenship. And wh- why would that be an issue? Why would that be an issue? Other than, is that taking jobs off British people? Because I wouldn't want that, okay? And, people, and of course, what he said was, these British people don't want to work. I said, mate, you're British. Careful what you're saying, because you know, we're going to all be offended by this stuff. That people do work, but a section, a sections of any society, any society at all, especially marginalised society, especially societies that don't go to university, such as young white British men. We know that's a society that doesn't tend to go to university. These people do. Of course, if you tell people they're not good enough or long enough, they're going to believe you as well. But the other aspect to bringing this level of immigration into the United Kingdom of highly specialist roles, which we're really not doing, but we are in some categories, of course, is we are robbing the countries they came from of those roles themselves. So you bring a surgeon into the UK, he brings his family in, that country he's come from doesn't have that surgeon anymore. That's why immigration needs to be just managed, and it hasn't been. If we're bringing in 600,000 people every six months, I remember when Cameron, back in 2010, was talking about uh, 30,000 and we believed him because we're idiots, right? Because we believed the politician because we're stupid. Um, and I just heard Reese Mogg on a, a podcast the other day saying it needs to go back to 30,000. It's too late now. The other argument I said is the Muslim community at the moment, where a lot of the troubles are coming from, elements within that community, not the whole community. This is the problem. You can't speak freely because people say, Tim, you're a racist. Islam isn't a race, mate. Just shut up and get some facts. All I'm talking about is facts. The Muslim community is 6.5% in the UK. Well, it used to be zero. That's just a fact. Never used to be here, right? Now it's 6.5%. I had someone to say, why are you worried about a community that's at 6.5%? It's almost as if they believe that community doesn't grow. Do you know what I mean? They believe it's going to stay at 6.5%. It didn't stay at 1%, did it? It didn't stay at 2%. It didn't stay at 5%. Why do you think it's going to stay at 6.5%? It's only ever going to get bigger. And this is the thing. When do you want to address it? When it's 12%, when it's 15%, when it's 20%, when that community is 50% of the United Kingdom, should we have a conversation then? All I'm trying to deal with, guys, is facts. That's all I'm trying to deal with. You were throwing, we're throwing 30 million pounds to protect mosques, yet we're taking the fuel benefit off old people, British people who paid all their life. I mean, I kind of feel, you know, I'm not, I'm willing to sacrifice a lot. I do sacrifice a lot financially to talk out like this. I've got to make a video today for a Chinese uh, virtual reality headset company. And yet here I am trying to give something to what I see as British people. Cause on Twitter, a guy called Steve said it hasn't, see me post for a while he's absolutely right i'm posted for a week because whenever i post like this i get so much criticism and i don't just get the criticism from in the comments whatever fine i get it from family members even my mum said um uh she had one of her friends say that my mum's son had been radicalized remember i was a senior flying instructor in the royal air force i just care i just care that british men like me can take their daughter to a dance class and hope they get her back i care about that, quite strongly about that. And it's, it's the hill I'm willing to die on, but it just means I'm going to be very poor. I'm going to be very, you know, spoken down about, um, because, um, uh, you know, people will say, but Tim, that guy wasn't even a Muslim. It's not about that. That's a trigger event. That was a, a son of an immigrant, a Rwandan parents. He was an immigrant. He was a British guy from Cardiff, but how British was he? He didn't obviously have British values. He may have been, and we don't know, he could have been a Christian from Miranda, he could have been a Muslim, it doesn't, irrespective, people concentrate on this too much. They concentrate on race too much. Not that that is a race, but they concentrate on cultures too much. He didn't have a British culture. I don't know any British guy, and correct me if I'm wrong here, because I can't think of one, unless we go back to Dunblane or something like that, where a British man has gone in and stabbed young girls. Ah, it's horrible to talk about. So do we now get fathers together to stand and outside these events? And do we... Is that what we do? I don't know. I mean, hit the comments. Let me know. I'll keep this really short. I think the biggest problem that we have, though, is that moderate Muslims, of which 
there are many, like the majority of the community is moderate Muslims, are so scared of these fundamentalists, these Islamists within their ranks, are so scared to talk out about them that they don't. And so the government tries to intervene. Whereas, you know, my community, if someone was being a dick or whatever, you know, I'd be, I know there are some moderate Muslims that do argue, as you say, look, report these people to us, report them to us. It doesn't happen. So it's, it's more complicated and nuanced than just saying, Muslims are bad in the UK because that's not the truth. As I said, my wrist was fixed by a Muslim. Okay, what a great dude! Uh, I've taught Muslims to fly. I haven't got an issue with that. No one does. But there are still issues with Muslims. It's like someone said to me, "Yeah, but Tim, not all Muslims are Islamist fundamental terrorists." I said, "No, you're absolutely right. But every Islamist fundamental terrorist is a Muslim. That's all we've got to look at. That's all we've got to address." It's like, how do we re-educate at source? How do we really make these people British? What, is it, what does that mean? What does that mean? I think we have to hold more people to account. You know, why is the Muslim population 6.5% and yet 20% of the population of the prisons is Muslim? That needs a discussion. Why are we not having these open discussions? I just, I just, I'm sick of the fact that as British people, we can't discuss this openly. It just needs to be in the House of Commons, people discussing this. That's what politicians are supposed to be there for. Like, what kind of future of our country do we want? Do we want one where literally, you know, there's, there's, I, I haven't got children, but I had to go to a school recently to go and pick something up for someone and I had to press a code pin at the gate. I'm like, I thought it was at prison somewhere. And then someone had to come and escort me. I had to get a badge on me. I was only allowed in certain areas because other areas had these, these doors. This is in a normal town in the UK. I didn't realize I didn't see it's so insidious. It, this, this demise of your country. It's so slow to take hold before you know it. You're going to wake up and go, this doesn't feel like England anymore. It doesn't feel like the country I was born in. It doesn't feel like that now to me, but I'm really interested in your opinions, guys. I just put this video out. It does me so much damage. You, you do not realize when I put a video out like this, who phones me up, who writes me emails, who leaves my school. I'm looking at my house, go run my school from my house with a, with a really nasty email or they don't, they just leave anyway. And I had another guy say that, um, you know, he's leaving because he felt I was racist and stuff. I'm like, it's not a fucking race, mate. I swore on my video. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. No one's got anything against people that want to come in and be British. But I do have something against people that want to go and stab up people or run them over on London Bridge and shit like that. If there's a problem within the community, the community needs to solve the problem. That's what I'm saying. It's not supposed to be an inflammatory video. It's supposed to just ask the question, you know, what we what are we going to do? I appreciate it, guys. Hit the comments. I'll go and deal with my emails. Thank you for saying you like my hair. I just came back from a haircut. No worries. And if you want me to speak about something, hit the comments and I'll try and talk about it. Tim Davies, Fast Hit Performance.